black and who you are. I ask any black man, what's your nationality? African American, black, Nubian. Some of you say you're Baptist, a Muslim. So many different definitions for one people. Why is that? Can we please put the drinks down for a minute? Put the blood down. Put the pills down for a second. And let's deal with real reality. Women just out of order. Old people are out of force with God. And the churches have failed old people. That's what I'm saying about black men. You are the low state. And you are the greatest thing God ever created. That's what I'm saying for you men to come back in your place. Rule this earth like God made it for you. At the Bible, we're reading God's word. They're trying to take you to American Idol. American got talent. They yell you to understand because they're not been taught the laws of God. All your long pastors they teach it to you and they're liars. Give me Jeremiah 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 30. Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 4, verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. Brothers, what does that mean? Be not as a lion in thy house. Hands. Zion. Being um, overbearing or irrational. Say it again. Being overbearing or irrational. That's good. Anybody else? Soldier Obadiah. Uh, being mean, being, um, having an attitude, um, just being too austere. Okay. Read this scripture again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. The word frantic, what does that mean? Brothers. Where's she at? Frantic, like, don't panic. Be cool. Frantic. Frantic is, here is talking about, have you ever seen somebody when they, 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 every time they talk, it, 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 it's rah, rah. Frantic. What are you talking about? That type, that's what it's talking about. Being frantic. Somebody, you're trying to speak to them, every time you speak to them, or every time they have an issue, they go from zero to a hundred. Immediately, there's no middle ground. There's no talking to them. You can't really reason with them. That's frantic. So when it's going into being a lion in your house, that's what it's talking about. You're irrational, like the young brother brought out. You're irrational. You can't speak to them. Even the scriptures come out, and they don't want to hear that. They just mean all the time, mad all the time, frantic all the time. Everything that you do is a problem, and there's no solving it. Read it. This is the, uh, this is the uh, definition of frantic. Frantic, emotionally out of control with anger, frustration, uh, marked marked by fast and nervous disorder, anxiety driven uh, activity. That's it. All right, real quick, go to uh, so frantic. That's that's part of the way to recognize a lion in your house. <laughs> frantic. <laughs> It says mentally deranged, emotionally out of control. A person that's emotionally out of control is a person that can, cannot control their spirit, is not scripturally. It's just emotions. It says emotionally out of control. Anxiety driven activity. Anxiety driven activity. Okay, you're just anxiety. You, you're showing, uh, you're just being uh, over, overactive, over, overly reactive. You just uh, exaggerating, okay? It, it, it's just just no reason for you out of control. You're just doing it just because you were upset. It's frustration. 
That's how you know somebody is being a lion in their house. They cannot be controlled by the scriptures. Okay, everything they do, like Elder gave an example. There was a brother that's being a lion in his house. He took it as being the head of your household and a woman has to be submissive in all things. The brother, this is actual story. Uh, the brother would use the restroom, go back into the room, lay down and say, go flush the toilet to his wife. That is not, that is not what the scripture is talking about as being a wife has to be subjected to a husband. You are a lunatic if you do that. That is not scriptural. Okay, being submissive to the woman, being submissive to a husband, is preferring that man to be your lord over the household. Right. You go, you look to him towards the government. Okay, you look to him as being the leader. You respect him as a leader. Okay, but if the husband is making wrong decisions, we have it in the scriptures where the wife gave it an advice. It's up to that husband whether or not he's going to take that advice. But for the man's part, you're not supposed to be overly emotional. Okay, you're supposed to control your most, or rather, use it in a spiritual sense, control your spirit. That's what the scripture is referring to. Cap. On the flip side, get um, 1 Peter chapter 3. Because as, as wives, you also have to know how to conduct yourself. You also have to know how to conduct yourself. Now, if you have a husband that's not in the truth, the Bible deals with how you deal with that husband that's not in the truth. If you have a husband that's in the truth, the Bible deals with that also. But as a woman, you have to know how to conduct yourself to be crafty enough to, to uh, win your man over. 3 verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Now, that's not talking about arguing with them. Because a lot of times, I know this is a problem with sisters. They'll argue and a man has a more overpowering, most men have a more overpowering spirit. And you'll start something with him, and then he'll take it to that to that place, and now all of a sudden, he's the lion. Don't have that spirit, sisters. Because there's a lot of sisters that do that. They'll start some mess, and then when the man goes raw, now all of a sudden they're accusing him of being a lion in the house. Mm -hmm. Read on. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won. By the conversation of the wives. By the conversation of the wives. The conversation of the wives is not a nagging, always starting some kind of controversy, always complaining about something. The scriptures tell you that, start at verse 1 again. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Meaning, as long as he's not telling you to sin, do what your husband tells you to do. Read. That if any obey not the word. They also may without the word be one. If your husband got the devil on him by just by your sheer, the, the way that you conversate and the way you carry yourself, that you might win him over. Bring shame to him if he's got any kind of uh, spirit in him. That you might bring shame to him because no matter what he does, your conversation and, the, and your actions dictate a godly woman. Read on. They also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. It says that they may also without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Without you even going into the Bible, just the way you carry yourself, you go win them over. Read on. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. While they behold your chaste conversation, the way you speak to them, regardless of what they're doing, coupled with the fear that you have, to have of the Most High God and keeping His commandments, Read. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So when your husband looks at you, he sees a woman that is beautiful on the inside. It's not just the outward appearance. You're not playing games. You're not playing church. You really act and you really feel what this Bible is speaking. You really about that life. And the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you conduct your conversation towards your husband dictates that. We don't. A meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of a great, of great price. And a meek and quiet spirit means not that you just... Do what he tells you to do or that you just fall back. 
but inside your spirit you can't because it's a lot of it's a lot of times and it's a trigger a brother also it's a lot of times when you you might not speak roughly to him but your whole attitude and the rolling of the eyes and the and the smacking of the gums and and the huffing and the puffing and all that you ain't saying nothing but everything in your your body language is screaming read that last part again even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. A meek and quiet spirit. Meaning when the brother looks at you, he knows that you really are in subjection. You really are in obedience. And you really do believe what this Bible is saying. Bring on. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God, or adorn, adorn themselves, adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. When it's talking about not afraid, tap it, brother. When it's talking about not afraid, it's talking about not afraid to to show that you really believe and you really serve the Lord according to the scriptures. That's what it's talking about. Now, I want sisters to imagine this. Imagine that you are this sister right here. That you're in subjection to your husband in all things. Get some pressure? Put some water in your face, get some pressure. Go ahead, Captain. Oh, I'm gonna put on the imagine that you, you're in subjection to your husband in all things. In everything. You got that meek and quiet spirit. He knows, in, in your actions, you show him that he is your Lord. Unless he's Straight up, the devil that the Bible speaks of, that's going to change his spirit. You want to you wanna, you wanna calm a lion down? If you think you have a lion in your house, apply these scriptures. And he's either going to leave or he's going to change. Read on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. And that's something that you got to pull... This is something you gotta pull also. That the husbands, us as husbands, we gotta dwell with the wives, dwell with the wives according to knowledge. According to the knowledge of this Bible and according to the knowledge of the position of our sisters. Read on. Watch this. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. As unto the weaker vessel. We give honor unto the wife. Read. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. Read on. That your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Having compassion, one of another. So our households, we're supposed to have compassion for each other. So to get back to the question, if you have somebody, if you have a man in the house with you and he doesn't show you any kind of loving compassion, it's always rah, rah, rah. Yeah, he's probably in the spirit of a lion in the household. Love as brethren. It says love as brethren. Anybody know what that means? Brothers? Love as brothers, telling a husband and wife to love as brethren. Yes. Just like you love your brothers or, um, in your congregation or your best friend or something like that, but to um, love your wife the same way. Just like um, it was. Um, Speak I, up. I don't know. I don't remember the two. The the story about the two. Um, Jonathan and David. Yeah. They was like they had love for each other, so you right. just love your wife just like you love your friend or your brothers. Right. Imagine growing up when you were growing up, you had a best friend or a brother, and y'all had secrets and y'all had things about each other that y'all knew that when when you ended up with a woman, it was certain things that you and your brothers did that you'd rather be around your brother or whatever because of how close y'all was. That's what it's talking about when it's saying love as brother. Everybody understand that? That's how we're supposed to deal with each other when we're in a when, when we're in a marriage. We got our brothers, but it said the, the scripture tells us to love my wife as brothers. We don't. Not rendering evil for evil. Not rendering evil for evil. Notice one thing: if every time something comes up, it's always an evil suspicion uh, or a evil reaction from a man. That's a brother that's dwelling in the house like a lion. But it says evil for evil, meaning it's two-sided so sisters always don't don't always get into position and it may or might not be you in a position where you remove yourself from the equation and just focus on the fact that he's tripping examine yourself also what sparked that why is he acting like it what did i do what can i do different 
Because the whole object in this game that we of life that we're playing right now is to win each other back to the Bible. To get us to come back to the, who we are and start acting right. Line ourselves up so we can be ready when Christ comes. We don't. For railing, for railing, but contrary wise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him assure, excuse evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Grab Sirach real quick. Sirach 28, verse 17 and 18. Let's get a few more of them signs. If the husband is acting like a lion, which basically means out the spirit, or if the sister is out the spirit, Gotta be somebody out the spirit right here. Let's get some of these signs real quick. Sirach 28, verse 17 and 18. Sirach chapter 28, verse 17. Sirach chapter 28, verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. So if you get whooped, it leaves what? A mark on you. Something visible for you to see. Read. But. The stroke of the tongue breaketh bone. So the stroke of the tongue is my words. Words actually do hurt. The, 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 that dumb saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. That's the biggest, one of the biggest lies on earth. Because words will get you killed. Words will break up a marriage. Read that last part again. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Read on. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword. But not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So once again, one of them signs that a brother's out of spirit acting like a lion, or vice versa, the sister, is what's coming out your mouth. Is y'all addressing each other like y'all back on the street somewhere as niggas and calling her curse words, you calling him cuss words, okay? Is you trying to create the most disrespectful saying to him and vice versa, the most disrespectful thing, both of y'all are out the spirit. And more so dealing with the brother, you're acting like a lion if that's what's coming out your mouth. You're destroying the sister with words. So if what's coming out the brother's mouth is disrespect, um, foulness, um, what I'm looking for some other words? Um, encouraging. Discouraging. Discouraging. You're just trying to destroy the spirit of the sister verbally. You're being a lion. That's not correct and that's not building it up. That's destroying the spirit. Read both of them verses together. Ecclesiasticus chapter 28 verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. The tongue, the mouth has destroyed many. It's another scripture that said that a soft word turns away wrath. Read it real quick. We have to know how to... Um, Cut. Don't even let it get steam. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath. You already know that the other individuals out the spirit. So since that person has said this, that, and that, and I hurt my feelings, I, I'm going to give my peace too. No, it's your turn to apply the law, whether it's the brother or the sister. The scripture says software does what? Turn it away wrath. It changed our whole sister situation. And a righteous brother, a righteous should be feeling convicted now. That damn, I'm saying all this, and the other person is giving me the scriptures. But they, 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 they ain't going railing for railing, like what we just read in Peter's. Alright? Another um, sign. Go to Proverbs real quick. Hold on. Real quick. Go ahead. Hold on real quick. Get First Peter again. I want to show y'all something. First Peter chapter three and whole Proverbs, because we're gonna read both of those together. First Peter. First Peter three and one. First Peter chapter three, verse one. Just piggybacking off what you were saying, Captain. Yeah. First Peter, chapter three, verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, meaning he's a railer, 
He's a he, he's out of the spirit. He stays out of the spirit. He's a railer. He does not obey when the scriptures tell you not rendering evil for evil. He does not obey that. Read on. They also may without the word, meaning without the Bible, because he probably don't want to hear it. He's too busy flipping out. Right. Read on. Be one by the conversation of the wise. It says without the word that he might be won by the conversation of the wise. Now go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 15 and 1. chapter 15 verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Meaning if you're going back and forth with him, then he's just going to get madder and madder and madder, and then you end up calling him a lion. But the scriptures say a soft answer turneth away wrath. So he can be won by your conversation. The way that you act, the way that you speak can win him over. You make him feel ashamed of himself. Yes, Stay in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse um, 12 through 14 real quick. Because if you're not disciplining your mouth, brother, if you're not disciplining your mouth, sister, guess what the next level is now? After you don't spill out all the evil of words. Watch this. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, Walketh with a forward mouth. So guess what? It started off with words. F you. No, F you. No, no, no. Going back and forth with words. It's getting heated. We don't. He winketh with his eyes. Uh huh. He speaketh with his feet. He do what? He speaketh with his feet. We don't. He teacheth with his fingers. So after y'all done went to a level with words, now it's getting physical. You ready to lay hands on each other? Brothers, you can't be muffing your wives, let alone kicking them or punching them. And you can't use the excuse where she got me upset, man. Oh, you know, she know she said this, and she know don't yeah. ever say that to me. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. You can't roll with that, brothers. And I hear that so many times; it's ridiculous. The Lord is gonna judge you. Ain't no blessings gonna come in that house. But it's not off being able to cut off the words. You're supposed to know that a soft word. Turns away wrath, and then continue. And if you continue, anger is gonna come. Is gonna continue. Read on my verse again. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. Go ahead. Forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. So read on the last part. Read verse twelve and thirteen again. I'm sorry. Verse twelve. A naughty person. A wicked man. Walketh with a forward mouth. So, once again, if your mouth ain't disciplined according to this Bible, you giving the railing, being nasty with your mouth, you're a wicked brother at that point. You're being a liar. You're not being that proper example. You ain't leading the house. You ain't leading it. Watch this. Go to Ephesians. This is the last scripture right here on this. I think we're going to start at. Start at verse 28. Start at verse 27. Ephesians chapter Start at 25, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Wherefore, Ephesians 5 25. 5, 4, 25. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Read it again. Husbands, love your wives. Read it again. Husbands, love your wives. We can understand love is doing them according to the law. And the law says you can't be cussing them out. The law says you can't be beating them. You put, we read the law, you put it in First Peter's. These are laws we read on how you deal with the system. That you don't be a lion inside your house. Read it again. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's love right there. That's love right there. Christ is our example on how to deal. Read on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Read on. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought man to love their wives as their own bodies. Read that part again. So ought man to love their wives as their own bodies. No brother sitting there intentionally hurting himself. He said just the same way that you wouldn't hurt your own body, 
Who don't sit right here every day and, and throw a rock on their feet? Try and mess up their back. Try and bust their own head. If you won't do that to your own self, why in the world don't do it to the woman of the Lord that the, the joints with? Read it again. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Read on. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Read it again. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. So it's saying that the way you deal with that is an example of how you really feel about your own self. Read on. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it. But do what? But nourish it. What does the word nourish mean, brothers? Yeah. No spitting, just speaking out. We need you to stand up and speak. <laughs> to feed, clothe, and put a, a roof over the head. Um, that nourish, you, nourish. Nourish means um, you feed them, make sure that they're being nourished with, with water and food, and make sure that they're all right. Somebody else. Brother Michael in the back. Nourish. Because tearing down is what we don't learn easily. We see that all examples in movies, comedians. We know how to tear somebody down. Crack jokes, make them feel like they nothing. But how do we nourish? Definition nourish. Take care. To take care of it. To build that up. To give life to it. To make it exist. To teach it. Read again. But nourish it and cherish it then, even as the Lord the church. Read that again. Even as the Lord the church. It says, but nourish and cherish it. Not tear it down and make it un, un, um, not useful for the woman supposed to be a pillow of rest. You help me. But if you're destroying all, the, all of that that she's supposed to, you ain't building up to be that. Because I still got to learn how to be a pillar of rest to be help me. But if all you're doing is destroying your pillar, destroying your help, where's your help going to come from then? What's our purpose of being there? You don't just destroy the purpose in it. Real quick, get uh, Sirach chapter 26. It always, well, you got to remember, sisters, you got to remember, uh, brothers, you got to remember. When we coming into this truth, we all dirty, we all wicked, we all sinful, we all jacked up. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need Christ. So we're all messed up. And the way I come in is not necessarily as quick as my wife is going to come in, or vice versa. But this scripture right here, it, it points to that. Read verse 23. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 verse 23 a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord now remember we all come into this into this truth wicked might not think you wicked because you ain't stole nobody's car you ain't shot nobody in the face or you ain't no rapist or pedophile and all the stuff that people think that they're good people for. But we're wicked because we don't keep the Lord's commandments. Right. And the scriptures say a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. But a godly woman is given to him that feared the Lord. Now, the reason I brought this scripture out is this. When you first come into the truth, say right now uh, a sister's in the truth and her husband ain't really in the truth. So he's being a lion in the house. Right. Well, you got to remember, both of y'all was wicked a minute ago. And that wicked man was given to you for your wickedness. Y'all was both wicked together. Now it's going to take some work. It's going to take some applying first Peter. It's going to take some applying these commandments that you might win that spirit over and bring him in to the bottom part of this. Read the bottom part of that. A wicked woman is given to a portion of a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that fears the Lord. We don't all come in at the same time and in the same way. So you got to remember that if your man is wicked, if your woman is wicked, and you complaining about it, well, you was you was wicked just a minute ago, and the Most High had mercy on you to give you to allow you to come in. Now it's scriptures that you are commanded to apply to help that person come in, exactly. so that y'all can live in the bottom part of this verse. The godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. But you got to remember, we are, everything that we got, our lives and all that, was brought on us by sin, our sinfulness. 
So have patience with each other. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.